Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Velocity, which is a super cool kind of a concept electric drone helicopter thingamajiggy. Uh, that is a technical term, by the way. You can find it in the FAR AIM. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first climbing in this thing, uh, looking around, uh, you immediately go, okay, this is a little on the sparse side, and it was actually designed to be a little on the sparse side, which is kind of neat because a lot of the more complicated buttons, like all this good stuff down here for a trim, we don't even have to worry about. And uh, taking a look ahead of us, whoa, hello, this is a new thing. Uh, welcome to Microsoft's new version, by the way. Take a look down here. Uh, we have a bunch of useful switches. You know, we have strobe lights, nav lights. We have this little display down here, which is going to help us out. So getting this thing started is incredibly simple. So all we're going to do is we're going to reach above our head. We have a bunch of these OPD and these two LV little switches. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this one on. Notice these turn orange. They turn orange to let us know that something is wrong. We're going to go ahead and close all those out real quick. We're then going to press the page up key on the keyboard. Now, the page up key is basically going to go ahead and enable the screen here. There's no uh, magical avionics button I could find. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to confirm that this switch here for vertical speed is all the way in the down position before we press this button. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift up these two switches. This is upper arm and this is lower arm. As soon as you click those two, you're going to immediately fire up the motors. That's it. <laughs> You gotta admit, that's uh, not bad, not bad at all. Obviously, if we need to shut off individual batteries, we could come up and reach our heads, switch those switches if we needed them, but that is literally as much as you need to do to fly this aircraft. So how does this thing work? Well, it's pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, because of the way it's oriented, it's uh, not anything like a traditional helicopter in the sense that, you know, you've got to worry about balancing anti-torque and all that other stuff. Instead, it handles a lot more like, you know, those little drones you probably fly around your backyard. So here's basically what it works. Moving your stick left to right shifts the entire platform left and right. So if you want to imagine, it's going to make us go this way or it's going to make us go this way. It doesn't turn you. Twisting or using your rudder pedals is actually going to point you where you want to go. Now, where it gets nice and complicated is going up and down. The way up and down is controlled is this little tiny little switch in the back. This is a vertical speed, speed, what's a speed switch? Speed switch. Speed switch. And basically, the way you do is if you put this down, the entire platform goes down. If you put it up, the entire platform goes up. If you leave it in the center, which is about the 75% point on your joystick, it will hover you. Now, to make things even more interesting, there's this cool little switch called position hold, which if you find a neat spot, you can press that button and it locks you into an automatic cover. So let's go ahead and give this thing a try. Look my head out the window here. I'm going to confirm left and right. Like I said, our LaGuardia here, we're flying over to a big junkyard right to our side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and gently push to the 75% position. The entire helicopter will basically sit here and gently lift up on its skids. And then we're only going to smoothly push past the 75% point. You don't have to do it fast. And the entire platform will start raising itself off the ground. Now, one of the things I get a kick out of with this is that once you get airborne, a lot of times what it'll do is mash the position hold button real fast to basically hold us. So once we're confirmed that we're airborne and everything's looking good i'm going to go ahead and put the vertical speed in the neutral position which is going to basically hold us here so if i pop to the outside view real quickly here you can see we're just sort of chilling uh, maybe we should have picked a, a more barren place to test this instead of new york city like i said we got a whole brand new version here okay so now that we're sitting here hovering uh, how do we get this thing to go go now the first thing that blew me away when i first started testing this thing was the fact that to make this thing go go it's not like a traditional helicopter we still have to tip in the direction we want to go as a matter of fact we're starting to tip uh, roll backwards here because of the wind I'm just going to stick the nose in a little bit. There we go. But anyway, we can reach down and bop the position hold button to kind of hang out here. But instead, what we do is we select the altitude we want to with our little vertical speed. And then we tip the entire platform in the direction we want to travel. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and move myself to the left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the joystick to the left or press your left rudder pedal that you had normally. I'm pointing in the direction of the city now. I'll go ahead and lean it out. I'm going to go ahead and push the nose down. Now, you don't have to touch the collective here. Once you start tipping in the direction you want to go, it's simply a matter of using your feet to keep pointing there and it's not just a matter of tipping the joystick in the direction you want to go so i notice i'm about to smack into those two objects there so i tip the joystick away from them and you'll see that it actually slides me in that direction it doesn't change my heading very much so now that i've gotten past that obstacle i can just hold the joystick forward which is going to make us travel forward like this now i'm just kind of cruising just kind of cruising just kind of cruising i'm looking out my window right here and i notice there's some pretty nasty trees so i want to get over them so i'm not going to stop tipping the joystick like you do in a helicopter instead I'm going to push up on my throttle, which is going to cause me to change my vertical altitude here. Of course, it's my vertical altitude. It's the only kind of altitude you have. Once I get to the new altitude I want to be at, I'm going to go ahead and hit that button there. All right. 
fine. This thing's rolling around pretty nicely. Now, if you want to go faster, you simply tilt the entire platform further ahead. Now, right now, I'm pushing my joystick all the way ahead, and you can see we're picking up speed pretty aggressively. But notice I have not touched my throttle at any point. That is simply not how this one works. The computer will keep your altitude constant. By tipping, you're simply controlling which direction you're going to be traveling in. So I'm uh, ripping around these trees pretty quick. It looks like I'm getting a little close. I'm just going to go ahead and push my throttle forward just a little bit. If you have a regular collective uh, attached to your chair or something like that, it's just a matter of lifting up on that collective. And now we're getting ourselves a little tiny bit of altitude. I'll wait until we get a little bit more clearance of the stuff underneath us. Go ahead and pull that sucker back. And now we are back on our way. We have a pretty nice little building. Again, photogrammetry is wonderful stuff when you have a nice fast internet connection for sure. Hmm, I think those uh, buildings have uh, definitely seen better days. <laughs> Should have done this in the countryside. So we're just going to go ahead and push this thing all the way forward, and we're going to get pick it up speed real quick here. Keep in mind, the faster you want this platform to go, the more battery you're going to consume with it. Now, most of you are probably like, well, that just makes sense. Well, the reality is because we're jamming on this thing so hard, our drag is really, really going to start taking over and it's going to severely limit our range here. You know, this is not like a nuclear submarine where we can just kind of go. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and take some of the tilt out now and I'm going to go ahead and stick my head down. I've already sucked up about 10% mm, of my battery before I've even done anything with this. Now, here's the next problem everybody has with this particular platform. What if I want to go ahead and make the thing turn? Well, first of all, going like this does not turn earn you. It simply shifts you. A translation is the word I always like to use for it. If we want to actually adjust where we're heading, we have to use our foot pedals or twist the joystick. So I'm looking over my nose right now. I notice the fact that we're starting to creep up on those big smokestacks. So what I'm going to do is that we can do two things here. We can go ahead and apply full throttle here, which is going to lift us up a little bit higher, or we can actually go ahead and combine a couple different moves. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to push my foot to the right here which is going to get us going in this direction. Now, the computer usually will go ahead and catch up to you. See how it's like doing like the hovercraft thing where it's kind of skidding sideways here? So what you can do is after orienting it in the direction you want to travel, you can actually tip the joystick a little bit in that direction as well. Now, I'm getting a little bit too close to these apartment buildings here, so I'm going to get a little bit of altitude. That looks pretty good, and I'll go ahead and do it that way. So by combining this shifting as well as a pedal maneuver, you can actually control this thing roughly like a helicopter. So I'll go ahead and left foot. I'll go ahead and push the joystick to the left as well. And you can see I kind of get this sort of sweeping motion with the entire platform. Continue moving this way. Again, you need a little bit of a can't counter torque here. Oh, shoot, United. Hello. I'm going to go ahead and lift up the nose a little bit here. And you can see how those big smokestacks are right on the side. So we'll go ahead and uh, just shift this time. So I'm not using any foot action. I'm just skidding the helicopter to the side here. And you can see we just sort of uh, start whipping along this way. And we come right along this narrow channel. Now, because I can, I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, lose a little bit of altitude here. I'm just pulling back on the uh, throttle controller, the collective. And again, you want to combine these two actions together. So we're going to come right down here on the water. Now, one of the wild things about this is, although it is not as helicopter as I'm used to, it is unbelievably easy to handle. Ah, I see they have the new flying traffic. Excellent, excellent. So we're just going to skid along here. I know enough about Microsoft Flight Sim to know if you attempt to fly under that thing, you're going to get leveled. So I'm not even going to try it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and execute a landing with this. The first thing you want to do is you want to slow down by pulling back on the stick. Once the thing starts to get a little bit slower, you can go ahead and just let go of the stick. And then come over here and you have the position hold button. Press it once and what it will do is it will lock you in place. Just give it a moment. Ah, that's kind of funny. I figured uh, that would hold that a little bit tighter, but it's not bad. So now once the position hold button has been selected, it'll actually lock you in place, making it so you just kind of chill in the spot here. But when you're landing the helicopter, I usually recommend people go ahead and press that button, wait for it to stable, and then slowly reduce your throttle to get it on the ground. If you want to be a little more aggressive or even want to go ahead and park the thing yourself, feel free. We're going to go ahead and cancel out of that mode right there. I'm going to go ahead and tip the platform forward again, and we're just going to sneak into this little park here. This looks good right here. It's a nice grassy spot. A little bit of right foot. And again, when you're approaching for a landing here, this is not a helicopter. So like a lot of your classic instincts of make sure you push this pedal or you push that pedal or push this pedal, it's, you're going to have to fight that just a little bit here. But I'm going to go ahead and come in nice and gentle. Again, reduce the throttle just a tiny bit. And don't work it too fast here. This is why it's nice if you have a throttle that has a good, good tight 75% point. So what I've done here is I've actually reduced my throttle to, let's call it 70%. And you can see we're just sinking ever so slightly here. Uh, whenever you're working with anything like this, you want to take your time. If you do one of these, you're going to accidentally. So be very cautious with that. You can see we almost overdid it. Come forward just a tiny bit. 
gawk at the traffic. Obviously, when we're landing any sort of helicopter, make sure you do it on a level platform, or you may be slightly disappointed here. Go ahead and reduce the throttle just a little bit. Again, you don't need much. That looks good. Pull back. Pull back. And we're going to go ahead and engage position hold. Give it a second to kind of stabilize you. Notice this thing's idea of position hold is actually to eject you from all that hard work you just... <laughs> Notice the position hold here is uh, simply ejecting us from all the hard work that we just created. So I'm going to disable it and go ahead and finish it myself here. Nose forward. Again, it does not take much. you got to kind of cancel out that momentum, then you can start coming forward again. One of the things that I've seen people do is that they try to start bringing it down again, even though they've already got this thing going in the right direction, and you end up smacking right into that big concrete pylon there. Lame. They need to fix that position hold. That's a little too sensitive. Pull back on the stick just a little bit. Come back to about 70% power. And that's about as much as we need. Push a little nose forward. We want to try to land on the skid smoothly. Don't cut the throttle until you're pretty much safely on the ground. Nose forward a little bit. Looks pretty good. Whoop. And we're down. Now we can reduce the throttle the rest of the way. You can see we've gotten this thing safely on the ground. Man, that is, uh, that, that's different. That's different. So with the other switches, of course, we want to take a look at are our nav and strobe lights. Always a good idea. This uh, little handy-dandy navigational platform. Most of you are very familiar with it at this time. We've got a couple of videos explaining how to use it later on. The big thing is when we're ready to shut down, you can kind of come up here and do one of these sort of things. As soon as you do that, <laughs> everything shuts off at the same time. Then it's simply a matter of uh, reaching up over our heads and shutting off the two operating switches. Enjoy.